What's a sex worker's favorite animal? A cockatoo. That's actually true. What up, YouTube? Scott here. Thanks again for visiting the channel. As always, I appreciate it. Uh, this video is going to have nothing to do with folding knives or anything, any EDC content or anything like that. So if that's what you're here for, I apologize. Please move on. If you're not, you're probably not going to be interested in what we're talking about here today. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, today I'm going to be talking about a, uh, a document uh, released a few years ago called Common Sense. Uh, in educating myself on the origins of our political system, uh, I learned that the majority of um, the citizens at the time actually had no interest whatsoever uh, in, de in declaring independence uh, from the crown. Uh, I did not know that. Uh, but a document entitled Common Sense, written by Thomas, pa Thomas Paine, uh, published in 1776, uh, which changed a lot of people's minds, uh, was um, brought to my attention while I was reading the Declaration of Independence. Uh, so, <clears throat> once I learned about the document, uh, while educating myself on the Declaration of, Declaration of Independence, uh, I had to read it to find out what it was about, uh, what it was about this very short um, document uh, that changed so many people's minds. Uh, I became curious uh, as to why so many people uh, were against separating from the, the, the British crown in the first place. Uh, prior to exploring common sense, uh, we, will talk with, we will talk about the objections people had to the uh, separation. Uh, so I'm going to go over those first, uh, and then I will go over the introduction uh, to common sense. Um, <clears throat> I had some ideas as to why uh, the, the citizens back then, or, or the, the colonists, whatever you want to call them, uh, I had some ideas as to why they might not have wanted to separate, but I, I wanted to get into the specifics. Uh, so according to the Museum of American Revolution, uh, in its condensed form, I found a condensed form so that I didn't have to, to talk to you guys about the whole friggin' thing, uh, they felt, uh, the, the, the colonists felt, a sense of loyalty to the British, go British government, uh, and the, uh, the colonists benefited from protection of the British military, uh, enjoyed economic advantages within the empire, uh, and feared the uncertainty and potential instability of creating a new generation uh, on their own. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, <clears throat> a new nation on their own, I apologize. Uh, essentially, uh, they viewed the status quo as largely beneficial, and they were weary of the risks uh, involved in revolution, uh, which I can totally understand. Um, but in, in my opinion, uh, it's a very, very, very dangerous mindset uh, to to kind of... I don't know. I, I don't necessarily want to call it complacency, uh, but uh, at, at some point you have to ascertain or, or decide whether or not uh, your way of life uh, is either being subverted or if there's something that you could do to improve your 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 status uh, in life or or, or or something like that. Uh, I, I think it's our, our duty uh, to do that no matter what, no matter how comfortable we are. Uh, key reasons for the reluctance towards independence uh, from the crown. Uh, protection from Britain. Uh, the British Navy provided crucial protection for colonial trade and security against foreign threats, uh, which many colonists relied on. And that makes sense. Uh, here's my issue with that. It sounds dangerously close to me uh, to extortion. Uh, and that might not make any sense. I, I don't know a lot here, guys. I know I've got a lot to learn. You know, people coming at me, you're like, boy, you got a lot to learn. Yeah, no shit. I say that all the time in my videos. I get that. But <laughs> if something I say sounds stupid, please correct me, but do it in a respectful manner. That would be awesome. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, uh, extortion is, is obtaining something, i.e. compliance or complacency, uh, by use of force or threat. Uh, refusing to protect your citizens, uh, refusing to protect the people under your rule, uh, <clears throat> unless they comply with, with your enforcement of your laws, uh, just, just sounds really dumb to me. It just it sounds like extortion. Uh, next, we had economic ties. Uh, the colonies were economically uh, integrated with Britain. Economically? Econ econ economically? Economically is right, yeah. Integrated with Britain, and many colonists feared disruptions to their trade and markets if they broke away. Now, in my opinion, <clears throat> this is simple complacency. Uh, while I understand it, I do. Uh, I've come to feel that in life, you, if you are comfortable, if you're happy... 
uh, it is essentially to periodically assess um, uh, assess your life and determine if there are changes that you need to be that need to be made in order to optimize it. Uh, we do this in our everyday lives without even realizing half the time, doing preventive maintenance on our vehicles, having conversations with our kids with a strong sense of willful intent uh, to determine uh, if there are changes that we can make uh, in ourselves uh, that can improve their lives in any way or enrich their lives in any way. We do this all the time, and, and I strongly believe that we should be doing the same thing uh, in our everyday lives. Uh, just because you're safe, just because you're warm, and you have enough food to survive does not mean uh, that you are, what is it the kids are saying these days, living your best life, I think. It doesn't mean that you're able to just coast through life and never have to worry about anything. Be the people on uh, on the spaceship in WALL-E. I don't know if you saw that movie, but I kind of feel like we're headed in that direction, guys. Uh, next, uh, we've got political representation, partially. Uh, while colonists were frustrated with taxation without representation, some believed that they could eventually gain more political influence within the British system. I can't speak to this. Uh, I, I have no idea how long they were taxed without representation. I don't know what the, representation, the level of representation they had was. I don't, I don't know any of that. Uh, so I'll learn more about that in the future, but for now we'll just move on. Uh, next was fear of instability. Uh, starting a new government uh, from scratch uh, would lead to chaos and uncertainty, which many colonists were hesitant to risk. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, uh, of course, I have no idea who, who, who coined it, but uh, just because this is the way it's always been done doesn't mean that it's not incredibly stupid. I, I, I think I saw that on a, on a poster in, in, in high school or something. I, I, don't, I don't remember when I saw it or where I saw it, but it, it's been with me for a very long time. And that tells me that that's kind of like a, in my opinion, kind of a profound statement. Something that you need to keep in mind from time to time. Uh, when people are, are, are fighting against change or, or, or reform, uh, anything like that. Uh, sometimes change and reform can be a good thing. I'm not a huge fan of change. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not. <laughs> I fucking hate it. Uh, but it's, sometimes it's necessary. Uh, it, 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 just, it, just, it just is. Uh, so this is going to be kind of uncomfortable for me. Uh, this goes into, you know, not staying in complacency, not, not staying safe, not staying comfortable. Uh, I lost my job uh, a couple days ago. Um, <clears throat> I've been a nurse for the last 20 years, uh, and I, I've, I've changed jobs frequently, uh, but always voluntarily up until this point, about two or three years ago. Um, I've been fired from three jobs in the last five years. Why? Uh, it, it's, it's simple. Uh, the people in charge uh, of certain portions uh, of the medical industrial complex uh, have turned these portions of the medical <clears throat> medical field uh, into assembly lines, uh, which, is which essentially make them money. Uh, it causes the quality of the care to go down. It causes the quality of the staff to go down. It causes everything to get worse. It basically destroys the entire thing. And all you have is people struggling uh, with duct tape and chewing gum to keep everything together. Uh, I've determined that I can no longer participate in something like that. So I've decided to change fields completely, but I can't do that until next year. So, uh, you know, my boss came to me recently and, and had some trouble with <clears throat> some administrative things that I wasn't getting done. Uh, and I, I explained to her, I says, you know, this is an impossible job. There's not enough staff. I will do the best that I can at this job. Uh, but I will not sacrifice uh, the needs of the residents or the staff members um, while I'm here in order to get administrative work done. If that becomes too big of a problem for you, please terminate me. Now, I, I know that it's, it sounds scary to say something like that, and it does. Uh, it also sounds scary to be... <clears throat> willing to deal with the consequences of saying something like that. And it is. <clears throat> but I'll be okay. I've never been through anything, obviously, that I couldn't survive. Uh, so normally I would just be beside myself. I would be in a puddle on the floor. Uh, but I feel that I'm doing the right thing. I feel that I'm not sacrificing my morals and my values and 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 pretending that something works when it doesn't 
Um, I feel that that's the right thing to do, in my opinion. Uh, and, and my wife has seen me at work. We used to work together. Uh, she agrees with me. Um, it's tough. Having to make sacrifices to, to stand by what belie you believe in. Uh, but I believe that it's right. I believe that it's the rightest thing to do in the whole, whole wide world. I really, really do. So anyway, <laughs> uh, as I was saying, um, next is loyalist sentiment. Uh, a significant portion of the population known as loyalists remained firmly committed uh, to the British crown um, and opposed the revolutionary movement. Uh, I have no beef with these people whatsoever. Um, what do you mean those people? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, now, so... Again, the people that the the, lo the loyalists, I get that. That's you know the same thing as the uh, the Democratic Party or the people on the left today. Everybody has their own opinions. That's fine. Um, there are people that you won't be able to change their minds, and and that's okay. Uh, all you have to do is find a way to coexist with those people in some symbiotic fashion. Uh, you know, being able to live with them side by side, work with them side by side. That's not impossible to do, not even close. Uh, so I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. So uh, <clears throat> we're gonna move on to the actual introduction uh, for common sense. Um, so this is like a 33 page document. Uh, it's split into four sections with one appendix. Um, I will cover uh, each section uh, in separate videos, uh, starting with the introduction in, in this video uh, and then the subsequent videos obviously will be section one, section two, section three, and then section four plus the appendix possibly will be in one video depending on how long the appendix is. Uh, I may do the appendix separately. I may not. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but when I'm, when I'm talking about all this stuff, uh, especially with the, the introduction, um, it just it reminded me of something when I was reading it. And it's something that I learned when I was in the military. And, and I may be way off base here, uh, but I was taught that sometimes you just have to embrace the suck. And what that means is when you're in a situation uh, where something very, very bad is happening, you have two options. Uh, you can either shut down and freeze up uh, and, and, and become what I used to call uh, combat ineffective but I don't know exactly what to call it. Basically, guys, I guess just useless. If you're in a situation that could cat could consequent, uh, sorry, could possibly be catastrophic, uh, and you freeze up, you are useless. That's just what it is. Your other option is to embrace the suck, let it in, um, evaluate the situation, react to it accordingly, not reactive. Yes, it's reactive, but. You have to think about it before you do it. That's the biggest thing here. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people are incapable of that. I might have been before I went into the military. I don't know. I was never really in a lot, really in a lot of situations where I had to, to think about things like that when I was before I went into the military. But this document so far is, is making me think of that. Like, yes, things aren't great right now. They could be worse, but they could also be better. And you have to embrace the better. Uh, so I'll stop talking at you. I apologize. Uh, let's explore common sense. Um, <clears throat> Okie dokie, artichoke. Here we go. Introduction. Perhaps the sentiments contained... Oh, I apologize. I forgot to tell you guys. Uh, I've made changes to the verbiage here uh, to make it more understandable uh, since it was written over 250 years ago, I think it was. Maybe 260. I don't know. Uh, I give you my word, though. I, I tried to keep the messaging as close as possible to the original text, if that makes any sense. Uh, all right, let's go. Uh, perhaps the sentiments contained in this, f <clears throat> in the following pages are not yet popular enough to resonate positively with the general public. A long habit of not thinking a thing wrong gives it a superficial appearance of being right. This causes initially a formidable, out a formidable outcry in defense of custom. But the public outcry will soon subside. Time takes more. Time makes more convents. Time makes more converts than reason. I apologize, guys. I'm just getting used to this whole reading on screen thing. It's not easy for me. If you're here from the other channel, you know that 
This is not my bag, uh, but I'm trying. Uh, and I know it's, I know it's probably very difficult to listen to. So I apologize. Uh, when a government authority abuses its power for a long time, and in a severe way, people are more likely to question the legitimacy of that power and begin to challenge it, even if they might not have done so before the abuses occurred. Since the King of England is actively supporting Parliament, and the American people strongly disagree with this alliance, they have the right to examine the claims of both parties and reject the authority of either, if they see fit. Effectively advocating for the right to rebel against both the King and the Parliament. Again, I feel like that's kind of like reminiscence of where we are right now. The author has deliberately avoided any personal attacks on specific compliments or specific compliments towards individuals in this pamphlet, arguing that those who are wise and deserving of praise don't need validation from a publication, and those who oppose it with opposing views will naturally change their minds without excessive persuasion. With opposing views and naturally I started on the other, I apologize. The American fight for independence is not just about the colonies breaking free from, the British, rule, from British rule. It is a fight for the universal principles of liberty and human rights affecting all people across the globe. I will get better at this guy. Uh, but that's the end of the in in introduction. Uh, I will do another video here starting soon uh, on section one. Uh, so we will cover that probably within the next few days. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be posting this on Let's Do It Up and Don't Get It Twisted. Uh, I will leave the link for this uh, for Don't Get It Twisted on the video for Let's Do It Up. Uh, if Again, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. We really appreciate that. And uh, take it easy, guys.